Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels Origins gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a Rakdos or Red's Black control deck, which is trying to get to the late game so its powerful card quality can take over and win the game. So in order to get to the late game we need some early interaction. So that's where Fiery Impulse comes in, single red to deal 2 damage to target creature and with Spell Mastery, which we can reliably activate since we have a lot of instants and sorceries, we get to deal 3 damage instead. We also have Perilous Mirror as an early blocker, and when it dies it can even take down pretty sizable creatures. And we also have a few ways to sacrifice our own creatures, so Perilous Mirror becomes very nice. And we also want a decent amount of creatures in order to make Shadows of the Past better, since we need 4 or more creatures in the graveyard before we can activate the 5 mana ability here to drain our opponent for 2. And a life gain is quite nice in this color combination since there's not a lot of it. And of course the most important part here is whenever a creature dies we get to scry one, which helps when we need to find specific cards. Then we also have Twin Bolt as early interaction, can take down multiple tokens, quite versatile, and also synergizes nicely with Ember Maw Hellion, which we'll get to in a second. And then our final removal spell here is Reef Soul, just to take care of larger creatures where the red removal might not get there. Also a Liliana to go along with our Peril Smears, which are bound to die. Just a lifelink creature is quite good in a control deck where you're trying to go late, and when you do transform her, she can also apply pressure in different ways by making the opponent discard, so nice in the control mirrors. Then the important card here is Read the Bones, which helps us gain card advantage and card selection and pulls us ahead. The 2 life can of course be a downside when you're playing against an aggressive deck, but certainly a great card. Then we also have Exquisite Firecraft as another removal spell that can also go to the opponent's face. And then we get to our creatures, where we have Arabosis Titan, 4 mana, triple black, but we do have a lot of dual lands to help cast him. 5-5, five, five, and if the opponent doesn't have any creatures in play, he becomes indestructible. The other text here is not super relevant, but just a 5-5 five, five that survives Languish is quite big. Then we also have Pia and Kiran Alar as just a value creature that makes multiple blockers. So you can block the opponents, 1-1 one, one flyers for example. And uh, you can even sacrifice your tokens to deal damage if you're in that stage of the game. Then we also have a Blazing Hellhound which is the way we can sacrifice our own Perilous Mirror. Just a 4-3, not that exciting, but fits into our curve and is a creature that can apply pressure. And then we have the very important card here, Languish, which is a way we can beat all the decks that are trying to go wide, like the Thopters and the Elves, and pretty much all the creature decks which don't have giant creatures. And most of our own finishers will survive Languish, like this next card, which is Priest of the Blood Rite, which might seem like a weird card in a control deck, since the Priest itself will make us lose to life every turn, but we have a lot of ways to uh, get rid of the priest, like for example the Blazing Hellhound can sacrifice it, we can uh, kill it with Languish while the Demon Token survives, and some other ways. So Priest is quite good at closing out the game. Our next card is Ember Maw Hellion, which makes all the red cards in our deck better by making them deal one additional damage, so all our burn spells become a lot better. Necromantic Summons, 5 mana, to reanimate a creature, can be in our own graveyard, can be in the opponent's graveyard, and if we have Spell Mastery, which we're likely to have, we can even put 2 additional counters on it. So nice to get our finishers back if the opponent removes all of them, and can sometimes even get the opponent's creatures if they're better. Then we get to another sweeper here in Chandra's Ignition. We do need to have a big creature in play before it becomes great. Um, but even with a Blazing Hellhound it's already pretty good. And if we can use it with the Priest of the Blood Rite with the Demon Token we can also get rid of the Priest. And then our final finisher is Kothofad, Soul Hoarder. Just a big flyer that does force us to lose life sometimes when we don't want to. 
but that's a risk we'll have to take. And then our mana base, 7 swamps, 8 mountains, 2 dragon skull summits, 4 ragdos guildgate and also the full 4 evolving wilds so we can make sure we have triple black for the Arabosis Titan and also double red for cards like Exquisite Firecraft or P and Kiran and so forth. So yeah, that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how we do. All right, let's take a look at our opening hand, which has lots of removal in it. But if we're up against a deck without creatures, then this can be quite bad. We also don't have black for language, so I'll try another one. All right, this is a little more balanced. We have still early removal in Fiery Impulse and Reef Soul, but at least we have some creatures we can work towards. Still not the best hand since we're pretty far away from triple black, although now we're a little closer. So yeah, I think we do play the Guildgate here over keeping up a Reef Soul, even though our opponents might be on an aggro deck here. We'll find out. And blue-red looks like maybe the Thopter deck, which only really starts playing creatures on the third turn. So yeah, let's just play the mountain here since the summit will still come into play tapped. And hope to fiery impulse something, I guess. Three mana, no creature, interesting. Perhaps our opponent is not on the Artifacts deck. But yeah, let's just play land and pause a turn. And as long as we keep drawing lands, this hand is pretty good. Four mana, still nothing. So maybe our opponent is on some sort of control deck. Let's see, we could play out our Hellhound. And I don't think think there's a reason not to. So yeah, let's just play out the Hellhound. This likely gets either countered or killed, but your opponent can't have Bone to Ash up since that's double blue. Alright, this that's fine. Was gonna get us either way, and I would rather lose the Hellhound than some of our other finishers. So, alright, there's Ember Maw Hellion, which... I guess we'll have to use two removal spells for, unless we find a land here. Nope. So if we had a land, I would consider playing our own Amber Mahalian and then using Exquisite Firecraft, which would deal then five damage to kill the opposing Hellion. But I guess we're just forced to do it the hard way. It's not great, but we don't really have a better choice since this can deal a lot of damage and it's not gonna go away anytime soon. So hoping to find a land here since we drew all of our expensive cards. Alright, tap land better than no land. And our opponent is not doing anything so I wonder if our opponent has the High Arbiter in his deck. Alright. So I think we just lead with a Ember Maw Hellion here. And get it countered most likely. Alright, Countermand's fine. Opponent mills us a bunch, helps us with our spell mastery I guess. Didn't lose anything important in this matchup. Pause the turn. So, let's see, we have uh, six lands now. Jessian Thief, interesting. So, we could Reef Soul the Jessian Thief. I think I'll try that. Just Reef Soul and then read the bones. And if our opponent is holding up another counter spell, all right, disperse also works. And I guess now we can just resolve our Arabosis Titan, 
which will be pretty difficult for opponent to deal with since he's indestructible right now. And then next turn we can decide whether we want to read the bones or... Alright, looks like our opponent's had enough. There's a thief. So... I think we can read the bones here. And don't want either of those. Find Liliana. And I guess we'll play Liliana here. Resolves. And now I'm feeling more comfortable attacking. Otherwise, we would be giving our opponent a card, and I don't really want to do that when we're ahead and can prevent it. Opponent could have another Disperse here for Liliana, but doesn't look like it. And there's Chandra's Ignition, which is quite nice. Uh, I think we can wait a turn, play the Hellion first. So attack with both. Pawn on blocks, we gain two. All right, that's fine. Opponent kills Liliana, but now we get to resolve whatever we want, which is going to be the Ember Mahalian. I guess we could have gone with the Kothofed as well, but our opponent is pretty dead here. So I guess we just attack with both and play this post-combat. Also works. Opponent does have Harbinger here, so can bounce one of our two creatures. Decides to bounce the Amber Maw. And does he block? He does. Alright, I guess we'll just play Kothofed instead. Makes it a little easier to kill our opponent next turn. So, I guess our opponent was not really a control deck, more like a tempo deck. But didn't really have a tempo draw, drew a lot of lands. So now we can attack with both. We could have ignitioned the Titan, but if our opponent has a bounce spell, that's pretty bad. Alright, and now we ignition the Titan, deal 5 to our opponent, and move on to the next game. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, and this is a little too many lands, so let's try another one. Alright, I'll keep any hand with three lands and a read the bones. Opponent leads with forest. Let's play mountain and pass. So Arabosa's Titan might be pretty far away here with only one swamp. But the read the bones will help. And we do have some cheap removal in case our opponent is playing a deck like Elves. So let's pause the turn and hope we get to Twin Bolt a creature. Alright, green black could be Elves. There's a Nissa which will Twin Bolt. And then next turn we can read the bones. So, not sure if our opponent's on elves, could just be a black-green value deck as well. Alright, we hit a lot of swamps in a row, so now we can actually cast our titan next turn. Don't need more lands here with this Read the Bones, I will take a priest. And we find a languish as well, so that's pretty much where we want to be if our opponent is playing the elf deck. I guess we'll find out here. Alright, Shadows, so our opponent's more on a control deck than an elf deck. 
So I guess we play... Hmm, interesting. So we could play Arabosis Titan. If our opponent has a flashback Marauder, that's pretty bad for us. Then we would rather want to wait for our Priest. So I guess we just read the bones here. Although we will have to discard two hand size, which I guess is a nice problem to have. So let's just read the bones here. And take Pia and Kiran. And now we can play land. Since we did not draw a tap land. And discard another mountain. Could have also discarded Languish, but I think that's still quite useful. Okay, strange. Our opponent does have an elf. Despite also playing Shadows. I guess you can play Shadows in an elf deck, although it is a little weird. So we could Languish right now. But I don't see reason why we couldn't just wait a couple turns. Um, if we play the Priest, our opponent could uh, perhaps kill it with the Archers, the Demon that is. So maybe we just play Pia and Kiran to buy us some time, make the opponent overextend into our Languish, since we have two of them anyways. And wait some more. And once we languish, this Arabosis Titan is going to be great. Another reason not to play the Titan right away is because their opponent could have Bone Splinters to kill it. Alright. Opponent could have a trick of some sort, but I'm just going to block as if our opponent has nothing. So this uh, Languish can be a little better, maybe. Wild Size, alright. Shadows Triggers. And no more plays from the opponent. Alright, I guess now... It's pretty safe to play the Priest. Since I would rather play the Priest before casting Languish to get rid of it than after. And now this this is only a 2-2, so it's unlikely our opponent gets us to a 5-5 next turn. So yeah, let's keep up a Mountain to bluff a Fiery Impulse. And pause a turn. And now if our opponent does kill our demon, we can just languish away. Alright, perfect. Anything else? Bone splinters, okay. And no attacks. So, let's see. I think we just attack. See what our opponent does. No blocks. We could play Kothofat here, but I don't want to take more damage from our priest, since our opponent could just try and finish us off with the shadows. So let's just cast a Languish here and play our Mirror. And then we can try and close out the game with our finishers here. Now that our opponent used his bone splinters already. Another archers. And nothing else. So it's between the Titan and Kothofat here. I don't want to lose a lot of life to Kothofad 
um, since we are pretty low but it is the card that can close out the game fastest so I think I do play it here and I guess we'll find out if our opponent has another bone splinters and here I guess I'll grab a mountain so we can play these in the same turn and um, let's see I don't think there's a reason to attack here the one damage is not gonna make a big difference and if our opponent does have removal for Kothafad I want to be able to block with the Peril Smear Lenoir Empath is fine Reveals a swamp, so no great draw for opponent, unless he has a double black spell he wants to play, which I guess he could easily have. Alright, let's see here. So we have seven mana available. We could play both of these. I don't hate that. I guess we'll start by casting the Firecraft over here. See what we draw with Gothafad. Another Swamp. Let's start by attacking for six. And let's see. I like that Pia and Kirin also give us the option of sacrificing our Perilous Mirror. Which might be relevant, so I guess I'll play them instead. Our opponent is more likely to have ground blockers for Arbosis Titan. Alright. Okay, there we go. Amber Mahalian. Not bad. Let's see, how is this worded? So, yeah, they deal 2 damage, so they will deal 3 damage if we have a Amber Mahalian in play. And let's see, we attack for 8. Sacrifice this. And that's another 4 damage, so I think our opponent's dead. Yeah. Attack for 8. Play Amber Maw. Activate Pia and Kirin. Sacrifice Peril Smear. 2 damage to them. Which is actually 3 damage. And then 2 more damage from the Peril Smear. Alright. Managed to beat the elf deck, although they had a pretty weird start with Shadows of the Past, which threw me off a bit. But yeah, got there anyways. Alright, let's take a look at our opener. And with four mountains and a double black spell, I think we want to try another hand. Well, this is an easy mulligan. And this is a pretty decent keep. And our opponent's mulligan to five and decided to leave. Well, we're going to play out this game anyways. And grab, I think, a mountain here. Since we have more cheap double red spells than double black spells. Mountain is a play. And a glory chaser, alright. Luckily we have Perilous Mirror. And then next turn we can read the bones and go from there. An attack. We could decide not to block here and then try and block whatever our opponent plays next and then shoot down the glory chaser. But I think that's a little greedy. So 
So let's deal two to our opponent. And alright, Dragon Father. So let's try and find a twin bolt with this reed bones. Pian Kuren also fine. I'll take one more black land. And I guess I'll take the priest as well. So next turn we play Piant Kiran, then play the Priest. And that should put enough pressure on opponent that the life loss from the Priest is not gonna matter. And we can also just block with him. Play Piant Kiran. And pass the turn. Alright, Twin Bolt is fine. And no attacks, which is good for us. And Hellhound is great since that's a way to sacrifice our priest. And I think I'll just attack here. I'll trade my P and Kieran for two goblin tokens. Alright, Twin Bolt is okay. And play the Priest. And pause the turn. Another Dragon Father. Okay. And Fiery Impulse is also good. So now we can attack with our Demon. Play the Hellhound. And we don't need to sacrifice the Priest quite yet. But it is my intention to sacrifice him before it's our turn again. And our opponent does not go for an all-out attack. So now we can deal one here. And no need to use Fiery Impulse quite yet. And I think I'm okay with casting Read the Bones. Another P and Kieran I guess we'll use. And no need for another Read the Bones. All right, and I guess we just attack with our demon here, keep back a blocker. And next turn our opponent will be dead to an attack plus an exquisite firecraft as well. So in response we can fiery impulse. So your opponent does not get to deal 2 damage to us. And yeah. So for a control deck we can kill pretty quickly once one of our finishers hits the table. And there we go. Alright, let's move on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which looks pretty good. We have a lot of early interaction here and Amber Mahalian, which is great with Twin Bolt. So let's keep and play out our mountain. And hopefully we're up against an aggressive deck where Twin Bolt is good. Mountain Go. Alright, Liliana is a nice draw here. Because if her opponent is just red, he needs to spend at least two burn spells to deal with Liliana, unless he has spell mastery. 
Undercity Troll. Okay. So now we have to decide whether we want to play Liliana or just cast Twin Bolt. The thing is I don't want to get this um, regeneration going, so I think I'll just try and kill it now. Now the question is do we Impulse or Twin Bolt, and I think it's more efficient to Twin Bolt here and perhaps get the Spell Mastery on Fiery Impulse. And now we can also get in for one. Hope to find a land next turn so we can play Liliana and still keep up Fiery Impulse. But we'll have to see what our opponent does here. So third land. The big creature in red-green is the Zendikar Incarnate for four mana. And looks like our opponent has no creature to play here. Could have removal. And I guess we'll find out if our opponent wants to kill the Mir here. Doesn't look like it. So let's just play Liliana. And pass the turn. Also a cool thing we can do with Twin Bolt is deal 1 damage to the opponent's creature and 1 damage to our Perilous Mirror to deal 3 damage total, sacrificing the Mirror to flip Liliana. As our opponent plays another Undercity Troll and also has a blue mana available. Interesting. So here I think we start by attacking with both creatures. See if our opponent tries to block and use a pump spell. Nope. Alright, then I think I'll just try and twin bolt the troll here again. Opponent has a Disperse, okay, so that explains the blue mana. We could have impulsed in response, but I would rather have my opponent spend two mana to play his troll again. Let's get some more black mana and pause the turn. So if we play the Hellion next turn, the impulse will deal four damage, so it can even take out the Zendikar Incarnate should our opponent have it. The blue mana does mean our opponent could have the Krasis in his hand, which could ambush one of our creatures. Instead looks like a Twin Bolt, followed by a Fiery Impulse. Interesting. So... We could Impulse our own Mirror to make our Liliana transform here. Yeah. I think we try and do that. So deal two there. So now our, our Liliana transforms into a Planeswalker. We get a zombie token. And our opponent used two removal spells. Can replay his Undercity Troll. But now we get to follow up with the Amber Mahalian. Also make our opponent discard. And Exquisite Firecraft is also nice, so I don't think we want to make anyone discard here. Could get back the Perilous Mirror as well. Let's start by attacking. Yeah, I think I'll just get back Perilous Mirror here. With the Exquisite Firecraft in hand plus Amber Mahalian. This is already 5 damage, so I think I just want to try and close out the game as quickly as possible. And Nissa is pretty good here, but her opponent doesn't have 7 lands quite yet. And Gate Creeper Vine. So what's the plan here? 
I think we can start by attacking and then we'll decide whether we want to firecraft the creature or not. Alright, that makes sense. Could have kept back our uh, Perilous Mirror here to try and save Liliana, but we can just firecraft our opponent for 5. So I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay, and as always, have a nice day!